When you are designing a native plant garden, or any garden for that matter, one of the best ways to begin is by creating a base plan. So what we mean by base plan is a simple scale drawing of your site and its conditions, and you'll use this throughout the design process. And typically there are three things that we really want to include in the base plan. The first is any boundaries that you're working within. So if you're designing your whole yard, that would be a property boundary. Or if you're working on a section of it, that would be the boundary of the garden bed that you're planning on planting. Second, we really want to include major features, so that would be buildings or decks, things that are going to decide where you can work. And that also includes focal features, so if there's a bird bath or a tree that you really want to incorporate into your design, you'll mark that down as well. And then third, you'll want to make note of any obstacles that you might encounter, so that could be underground tree roots or lines that you want to be careful not to disturb along the way. And when we talk about doing a drawing to scale, what we mean is that you're taking what you see in real life and making it smaller, but keeping all of the proportions correct in your drawing. So an example of a scale would be one inch equals one foot, which means that one inch on your paper is the equivalent of one foot or 12 inches in real life. And there's a big advantage to starting off by scaling your drawing, which is that you can then use it to do calculations later on in the process. So we'll work through that in this video series, and in video four, for example, when we go to calculate the number of plants that we need, we're going to make use of that scale drawing and it'll really make calculations easier later on. Now that we've gone over the basics, let me take you over to our garden site and we can get the measurements that we need to start drawing out our base plan. So I'm just going to take with me a clipboard with some blank paper. You can use graph paper if you prefer as well. And I'm going to take out a tape measure and some pens. Welcome to our garden site. So I brought all the tools that I mentioned before out here with me. Yesterday we were out here and we did a little bit of prepping, did some weeding and made sure that we had some boundaries that we could measure today. So we have some natural boundaries at the back. We have a Norway spruce that will stay in the garden. And then we've also added this fallen log over at the side and that will provide some good habitat once the garden's established. And then the rest of the boundaries we've just made using some logs. So we have quite a big planting area here. And what I'm gonna do is start with sketching it out and then and we'll measure out and add some dimensions to it. So what I want to start with is just doing a quick sketch of the garden area and then I'm going to measure it out and add the dimensions to it. So I'm just kind of standing in front of the garden so I can see the whole thing and I'm just going to rough in the boundaries here. So I know that there's kind of logs over here, it kind of cuts in, there's a tree root. And then I do want to add in, I want to make note of that spruce. So I'm just going to put a big kind of circle for now for that spruce and we'll measure it after. And then I have this log that's kind of on an angle that cuts really far down to the front of the garden. And then we have a couple logs here. So again, this is really rough and that is perfectly fine because we'll make it pretty afterwards. And then our other front boundary comes along here and then there's that boulder right in the front there. And then we've kind of left a gap here and we're planning on putting a path up to that log. I'm just adding a few labels to the drawing here so that I know what we're working with when we go back inside. So now what I would like to do is fill in the major dimensions of the site and you can see naturally what they are. One thing I want to note is if your garden is irregularly shaped, most gardens aren't a perfect rectangle, is you'll want to kind of square it off just for the sake of doing measurements. So I'm going to draw a line here and we will measure the depth of that line from the front of the garden to the tree. And you can see how we can draw in a, a rectangle here that we can work from. And then later on when we're trying to calculate areas and whatnot, we can figure out based on these other dimensions how much area we're losing when, when we cut off those corners, which we will have to do. So what I'll start with is measuring across the front here and up the sides, and then I will start to add in some of these other dimensions around. 
Okay, so I have my sketch, I've brought it inside to my desk here, and I've got all the dimensions labeled on this. Now what I did when I was out of the garden, I measured in feet and inches, because that was the easiest thing to do on the tape measure, but to scale it, it will be a bit easier if everything's in inches. So I've just gone through and changed all these dimensions, done the calculation, um, and translated them all from feet and inches to just inches. And if you're working in any other set of units, for example meters, you might not need to do that, um, but if you are working in feet, I would encourage you to. So my next step of the process is deciding which scale I'll work at. So what you see here are the garden dimensions at their most basic. So the garden is 22 feet wide by 13 feet deep, or 156 and 264 inches. And I know that I'm going to be working on a letter size piece of paper, and I'm doing that because it will make it easier to photocopy later on. And a letter size piece of paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. So what I need to do to calculate my scale is figure out what I need to divide 264 and 156 by in order to make it fit on a piece of paper. So I'm okay with using the whole width of the paper and I know it will be landscape oriented because the garden is wider than it is deep. So to figure out the largest possible scale that I can fit on the paper, what I'll do is divide 264, which is the width of the garden, by the width of the paper, which is 11 inches, and this gives me 24. So basically if I multiply 11 by 24, I get 264. So that means if I use the whole width of the paper to fit the garden on, everything will be at a one to 20. 24 scale. I also need to make sure that the small side of the garden, this side here, will fit on the small side of the piece of paper, so I'll do that calculation again for the other side. So 156 inches divided by 8.5 inches gives me 18.4. If I round that to 18, that tells me that the largest scale I can fit on the small side of the paper is 1 inch equals 18 inches. Now that is actually a larger scale than this one above, which means it's more zoomed in, so this is the limiting factor. So now I know that the largest scale that I can fit proportionally on this piece of paper is 1 inch equals 24 inches. And that's actually a pretty easy scale to work at because it's 1 inch equals 2 feet, which is a nice even number to work with. So now that I know that my scale will be 1 inch equals 24 inches, or 1 inch on the paper equals 24 inches in real life, I'll do the calculations to figure out what the dimensions will be of my garden drawing on the paper. So if I take 264 in real life, I need to figure out what number of inches that is on the paper. So I divide by 24, that gives me 11 inches, so we'll use the full width of the paper. For the other side, I'm going to take 156 divided by 24, and that gives me 6.5 inches. So this side of the garden on the piece of paper will be 6.5 inches tall. Okay, so I know that my dimensions will translate to 11 by 6.5 inches on the paper, so I'm going to draw in that outside boundary of the garden. I'm going to leave about a quarter inch at the top of the paper so that the photocopier doesn't cut it off. It might cut off the sides a little bit later on, but I can always touch it up after. So let me just grab my rough copy drawing that we did out of the garden with all my dimensions on it. And I'm gonna start in this bottom corner here with this log. So basically, I just grab my calculator and I grab my ruler. And what I'm going to do is go through and divide all of these inch measurements by 24 and then draw on the lines according to the number that I get when I do that. So this log is 72 inches long in real life. I divide that by 24, which is our scale, and I get three inches. So this log is three inches long on my paper, and it is one foot wide, or 12 inches. 12 divided by 24 is half, half of an inch. So there we have it our very first part of the drawing. Now I'm just gonna work my way up here. So this next log is 39 inches, so. Th
And if you remember, I mentioned at the beginning that the scaling the drawing is really important because I could already see some of the mistakes that I made when I hand drew out at the garden. We tend to actually overstate certain features when we're drawing by hand, just by sight. And you can see that when I actually proportion this correctly, this log is actually quite a lot shorter in actuality than what I thought that it was. So this is why scaling a drawing is important because this distance here will play a role in what we decide in our design stage. Let's just work through the rest of the drawing and I'll add all of our different features to this. I'm just going to rough in still some of the features that are a bit less important and less difficult to measure. So the tree roots here, I know that they're about two feet, it's about two feet from the tree that they really are pronounced, but then they go back underground. And then I also, this log, the boundary of the garden is the front edge of the log, so the width that I show of the log doesn't have to be super accurate. Next, photocopy your base plan and on the photocopy, add the dimensions back in so that you have one copy of your base plan that's blank and one copy with the dimensions. Then make a few photocopies of each of these so that you have them on hand. We'll use the copy with the dimensions on it in the next video when we map out our site conditions.